Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Neo. Today we begin the third and final DLC, Bloodshed's End, which takes place during the summer campaign of the Siege of Osaka. マリアが大阪城にいることは間違いなかろう。ウィリアム、再び大阪へ参ろう。この戦、お主も知る黒田長政と立花宗重殿も参戦しておる。だが、再会を喜ぶのは後にいたそう。人の道を外れて勝ったとて義なき天下は続きませぬ霊石を使わずともこの雪村必ずや勝ちましょう信じてよいのだな信繁皆の者共に三途の川を渡ろうぞ Before we get into Mission 1, uh, I want to point out one addition that came with Bloodshed's End. Down here we have our usual Twilight missions, but up above them is now this Mobius symbol for a new endless special mission type called the Abyss. Uh, we'll get more into that later, but let's start up the first main mission, the Sonata's Resolve. An expansive mountain, Mount Chaosu, gets its name from the handmill used for grinding tea leaves during the tea ceremony. While there are other mountains that share the same name, the one located to the south of Osaka Castle is said to be man-made. During the siege of Osaka, Tokugawa, uh, Tokugawa Ieyasu camped there in winter and Sonata Yukimura did so in the summer. Yukimura expanded on the remnants of Ieyasu's camp with a small semicircular bulwark known as an umadashi, turning it into a stronghold that could focus an attack on attack as well as defense. The Tokugawa had a tough time dealing with the constant barrages from Mount Chaosu and refer to it as the second coming of the Sonata Maru. There are two gimmicks to this stage. Uh, the first are the cannons and the lookouts. If you recklessly approach certain guard towers, like the one they start this mission off with up here, they will call in alerts for a hail of cannon fire to come light you up. Uh, this level is laid out like a wide vertical tower uh, with many layers that constantly build on top of one another. And there are always going to be cannons above you, manned ones. You can blow those cannons up once you reach them, and you can also fire them yourself to demolish parts of the level to open up new routes through. But most importantly is just that you avoid getting lit up by them. And around here, I think we can actually toss a kunai at the doggo. Oh, I just barely didn't kill. Uh, and we can also blow the palisades up around here with a Harokudama. Well placed at the explosive barrel. So we can get behind here to get a Kodama. Kodama number one for the mission. The other thing about this level 
is the Braves. We had a fight Sonata's Braves at the end of the second DLC in what was basically a big gauntlet of a level. Which is okay the first time around, because it's something new, it's something thematically really appropriate. It's still thematically appropriate here, but it's less fresh this time around. And thankfully, the Braves are toned way, way down here. Uh, because if they're gonna repeat a gimmick, at least it's not gonna be tedious this time. Uh, they're much weaker and they're much less susceptible to uh, damage and being block stunned. But you still have to be careful with them. You can't just be reckless. Uh, that's kind of the whole thing of this DLC mission is just don't be reckless. Uh, this one, more so than most of the DLC missions, demands a kind of concentration and uh, a measured approach, especially because of how vertical the level is. But that's about it for the level gimmicks, until they start introducing some cool new enemy types. So instead, let's talk about some of the additions to Bloodshed's End. Uh, first off, they added another New Game Plus uh, style difficulty, uh, Way of the Neo. There was Way of the Demon and then Way of the Wise, after Way of the Strong and Way of the Samurai. Uh, and now there's Way of the Neo, the final New Game Plus mode. Which comes with even higher level stuff. I think it goes up to 310 now. You get like plus 50 uh, for the the divine upgrades. And I think Way of the Wise a while back added ethereal items, which I don't know if I ever mentioned. Uh, which is now the new highest grade of uh, rarity and equipment. It's orange instead of the divine greens. So yeah, stuff scales much much higher now. Uh, in addition to that, they added a bunch of quality of life stuff in this patch that introduced Bloodsheds, and this is also an- Oh, hello! Almost walked right past you. I don't think that's a cannon we can fire, unfortunately. This one's a little bigger and bulkier than the others. Uh, what were those quality of life changes that just slipped my mind as soon as I saw that dude? Um... Oh, one of them, which I really appreciated, is they eased up the uh, the mission requirements to unlock regions on the New Game Plus modes. Uh, you start off with just a few regions unlocked when you go into, like, Way of the Strong or Way of the Demon or whatever. Uh, and you have to complete missions to unlock more regions to, uh, to do quests in. And they used to be pretty tedious to unlock. Uh, now you have to do far fewer missions to unlock new regions. They also really toned down uh, the cost of soul matching, which I appreciate. They also made it so uh, all the new game pluses give even more Amrita than before. So it's not quite as much of a grind to get leveled up or to even get caught up. Uh, and they also added more shortcut bars. They double the amount of shortcuts you get. And you can toggle that on and off, so if you were fine with just cycling between the two sets of uh, hot bars, you can just leave it as is, or if you want you know, up to 16 now, that's an option. There's so many detailed little options and things you can toggle, and like, Neo's got the best the best option menu of any console game, I think. And I think I said the same thing at release, just for the fact that it gives you the option between choosing uh, a higher resolution or 60 FPS, which is something you almost never get in a console game. One of the best features of Neo to this day. Uh, another big addition they made is they added one or two new moves for each weapon, one of them which you've seen for the Kasarigama. Uh, it's one of the new combo finishers. Uh, there's another decent one that I haven't found a good occasion to show off yet in this level because we haven't gotten ourselves surrounded or in too much of a desperate situation. 
Uh, it's this really crazy crowd control technique where you flail both the weight and the sickle of the Kasarigama at the same time. Uh, and I think it's L1 and Triangle. You can see in the distance, one of the guard towers was just demolished, uh, which actually makes some things easier for us. I think later on from this one, uh, some of them just remove obstacles towards, say, like Kodamas and other things near the beginning of the levels. Uh, some of them actually clear stuff up for you uh, ahead. Now, since they added new moves for each weapon, uh, they did not add a new weapon in this DLC. You know, we got the Tanfa in the second DLC, we got the Odachis in the first one. I had my heart set on the possibility of getting a Naginata or a... Sp oh, shit. There's like three different names for it. Uh, one of the Spike Clubs. I can't remember any of those names. This is probably one of my the scariest Braves. Because he's got a, uh, a number of new techniques. I think the reason they actually reintroduced the Braves as a stage gimmick, and it's, it's kind of clever, uh, is so they can show off some of the new uh, weapon techniques, because they're all users of different weapons. This guy, if you give him a chance, shows off some of the new uh, uh, dual sword techniques, and uh, they get scary as hell. Oh, there's also new uh, Ninpo and, and stuff for uh, Omnio Magic and for the Ninjutsu stuff. But yeah, no uh, no new weapon. Like, nothing like the Tanpo or the Odachi. Which is unfortunate, because I wanted that Naginata real bad, but no. Hisako cosplay build. No Naginata for me. I am pretty bummed out that we just got a handful of new... Uh, techniques instead of a brand new weapon entirely. Uh, but the development of this other new thing, the Abyss Mode, uh, this DLC being slightly meatier than the others, and the new skills is probably what took up the development resources that they would have ordinarily put into that new weapon type. So it's not a complete wash, it's just... Uh, some people are really gonna like some of what they did instead of you know, a new weapon type, which they may not have even used. Gotta watch this. It's just personally a little disappointing. I personally would have liked... Oh good, he didn't swing or anything. That would have stopped me from hitting the horn. Uh, I would have personally liked a new weapon, especially if it was a Naginata! I wanted one so bad! I wanted one so bad. I think I said that at the very beginning of this Let's Play. Um, but let's talk about that other new thing, the Abyss Mode. Uh, the Abyss is divided up into progressively more difficult floors, and it's endless. It just keeps going and going and going. Uh, you will get four fragments of an existing stage to beat on each floor of the Abyss. Uh, or you can just choose not to, and I think go straight for the boss of the floor. But each one of the, the levels that you beat removes a debuff for you or a buff for the boss of the floor. Uh, so you can go do that, then fight the boss, and then you move on to the next floor. Uh, and once you beat uh, the boss of a floor, you get a piece of what is called Defiled Loot. And Defiled Loot scales with the level of the floor you're on, so the deeper you go the better that that piece of gear that you got gets. I'm, how it works is like you basically cash it out when you leave the abyss, and that's ultimately when it determines like the rarity, the, the bonuses, all of the, the stuff that you get on that piece of defiled loot. So if you go into floor one, beat the boss, get one, you know, defiled thing, and you leave at the end of floor one, that's about the weakest piece of defile loot that you're gonna get. But if you cash out in like floor 200 or something, it's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be an amazing item. Probably like a level 310 plus 50. 
there is also one more thing that we will see later, and it's related to Ninja Gaiden. And it's maybe the best new thing in this DLC. <laughs> And we're gonna slowly sneak up on this dude. You see another explosive barrel to the right, uh, which we can use to blow the cannon up. Oh, you were still not dead. We can bar enough back not to get hit by the explosion. Good. Oh, I forgot to fire the cannon. Whoops. Uh, I don't think that'll make too much of a difference. I think it's more important that I just blow it up. Uh, there's also something that can be done with the dwellers with the explosive barrel strapped to their backs. Uh, we came across a cannon earlier, and there was no uh, explosive barrel by it. So the idea is, uh, you, sometimes you want to lure a dweller sh with uh, one of the... Oh, fuck. Oh, I'm on the wrong bar, too. And I was underestimating their range, these ninja yokai with the Saragamas. Super brutal. Uh, you can sometimes lure the dwellers near a cannon and then blow the dweller up in order to destroy the cannon. Uh, and sometimes you will have to do that. If you want to destroy the cannon, that is. And I think with the cannon, you know, or the uh, Kasarigama yokai dead, should come up to a gate up here, which uh, bisects the level, or rather signals the halfway mark of it, and our second shrine of the level. So I think that's going to do it for now. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.